look at these. Aren't these fun? These are purple hyacinth beans. They're such a lovely warm color. So we're just home from our last holiday of the summer. As always, traveling brings a lot of inspiration. Uh, this was no exception. We took our kids to Drumheller, Alberta, Canada, which is the dinosaur capital of Canada. It's also an incredible landscape, incredibly different from our coastal rainforest uh, climate here. So there's lots and lots of inspiration. And I was eager to get home and dig into the flowers that bloom while I was away. And I've been staring at these purple hyacinth beans all summer. And I don't have many. I planted them in a little bit of a shady location, so I didn't get a huge harvest of them. So me and my purple beans are heading to my temporary studio in the barn, but that's a story for another day. But today I'll be sharing as I make a fall-inspired asymmetrical centerpiece just for me and just for fun. <coughs> Hi, McStinkers. These are our boys, our bucks, and they're running right now. So lovely. Hi. <coughs> When it comes to choosing a color palette to work with, I tend to work off of one or two things in my garden that uh, provide me some inspiration, and today is no exception. To build my color palette, I started off with this red, violet, purple hyacinth bean. I was inspired by that in combination with these shaggy salmon colored zinnias. So this is where my color palette started. And from there, I've built it out to include oranges. I have a couple of different orange ball dahlias. This one got, has a little bit more zing to it. This one is Snow Ho Doris. And my other one is David Digweed. It's a little bit of a softer orange. I have a little bit of soft lavender pink colored anemone so i've got an analogous color palette going on here between the purple red violets over to the salmons and pinks and reds and then over to the oranges for my supplies today i have my vase gone with a little bit of a retro vase i think i inherited this one from my grandmother i am using chicken wire as a mechanic um, a little more height to it, partly just because I don't want to cut it down. I just like to reuse this piece. Um, gives me a little bit more support and stability with flowers that like to flip around that are a little heavier like dahlias. Uh, normally I would be using tape to secure my wire in. In this case it feels quite secure already. I'm just going to skip the tape since this vase arrangement is just going back into my house. And of course I have my cutters, of course I have my floral knife, and what you don't see here is my not so beautiful um, setup underneath my vase. I've got a feed pan that I borrowed from my goats, I've got my turntable, and to get my height up so it's comfortable to work, a lovely milk crate. So my first consideration is the shape of my design, so I want a natural style, asymmetrical, all around shape because this one's going to be probably sitting on my coffee table or my kitchen island and I want to be able to see the beauty from all sides. I have this lovely, um, very structural nine bark or physocarpus, lovely reddish purple color. That I'm going to start with to establish my overall shape and lines. 
I really want to focus on keeping the negative space in this design. So you can already see here, that's just a lovely set of lines there. Of course, they are going to spin around sometimes. A little bit of part of working with chicken wire is that things do shift. Uh, don't panic as, as you add more materials. It'll start to settle down for you. So from here, I could put in my focals. I'm just going to fill in a little bit more first. I have this beautiful, this basil that went to seed while I was away. Lovely sort of smoky purple. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this to get a little bit more coverage right away. I'm struggling a bit with the light in here. So just shift it a little bit, see if I can get a bit better lighting. Really want to showcase the foliage in this design, the sort of the fall harvesty feel that it has. They have these lovely smoky reddish rudbeckia. So I'm going to start with these. I want to set some of these deeper in. I chose these darker, smokier reds as a natural progression from the physocarpus and the warm purples. But the muddy reds hopefully will also help me achieve my goal of a muted sort of smoky palette that really showcases the orange and salmon dahlias and zinnias without becoming too bright and vibrant. Here go those amazing purple beans. Placing my dahlias now to really begin building my areas of focal emphasis. Look at this crazy, weird, beautiful stem. Finishing details now, I want to add in my last little bits, my airy bits to add that lightness and texture. I have what I'm going to call my floaters, which are black scabiosa, the anemone, and nicotiana. I'm just going to have a look now and check all my sides, go all the way around, make sure there's interest and stopping points all the way around. My vase is getting pretty full now. It's getting a little harder to work. Stems in. They need a little convincing sometimes. I really love how this one turned out with the soft lavender anemone tying into the purple and red tones. It's a fall palette with a twist. I love leaning into the fall colors and textures this time of year as the summer winds down and it becomes apparent in the garden. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.